Hello everyone, this is the webinar on environment specific artifacts with WSO De Developer Studio. Welcome to the webinar. So I'm Avantika Senera, software engineer. I'm from the Developer Studio team. Hi, hi everyone, I'm Rajiva, software engineer from Developer Studio team. Now we'll have a brief look on the outline of the webinar. First we will be uh, have some presentation on the introduction to the WSO Developer Studio 4.0.0 release, then the import importance of the environmental specific artifacts and um, recommended approaches uh, how to create the environment specific artifacts using Developer Studio and how to deploy that environment specific uh, artifacts in the WSO servers. Then we will have a demo on uh, explaining creation and the maintenance of the environment specific artifacts using the developer studio and how to deploy the artifacts in the WSO2 product servers. And we can have a question and answer session uh, at the end of the webinar. Now we are, I'll have a look on uh, what is the new architecture in WSO2 developer studio 400. So in the earlier versions, we had uh, all the plugins uh, available in one Eclipse distribution, which means that all the WSO related products toolings are, can be available at the one uh, plugin. So you can use the ESP plugin, um, um, DAS plugin, um, analytics plugin, everything in at one place. But in from the 4.0.0 release, we have moved to the kernel based structure. Here yeah, we will have uh, in the kernel we will have some uh, basic plugins which will help uh, WSO2 uh, products to develop on top of the kernel and the, the different um, um, product based plugins will be available as separate plugins so according to the user's need they can download their uh, um, respective plugin and use it. So what uh, user should know on migrating developer studio 400 is according to their feature need they can download their uh, plugin uh, from the hosted place for example if they want to work with the ESP project they can download the ESP plugin and start to work on that and if they want to use some analytics plugin they can install the analytics plugin on top of the ESP plugin and develop the necessary project so why we have moved to this new architecture is like uh, when we are having a um, 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 all the plugin in one time it will be uh, difficult for users when they have not using the particular feature so according to the new structure they can download and use the necessary feature uh, according to their use case so that's what we have separated this as a kernel uh, based architecture so kernel um, WSO developer studio kernel plugin will provide the core plugin to develop the WSO2 product based plugins on top of it. So user then the product plugin will be released by with the product release the, then users can have frequent releases and more features in the tooling side. That's why we have maintained a separate architecture from the 4.0.0 release onwards. So now we will look into how we can download and configure the plugins in developer studio. So according to the new developer studio 4.0.0 architecture, we have three type of uh, installation. So one is standalone zip that will have the uh, only the product plugin. So which means if we have the uh, ESP standalone uh, plugin zip, it will have only the ESP uh, related tooling stuff. So other thing is composite zip that is also have two different categories. One is com uh, one, one will have the uh, kernel and the product installed. Other one is the full distribution, which means it will have the Eclipse uh, instance plus kernel plugins plus the product plugins. So if we want to install uh, at one time, we can download the Eclipse dis distribution itself and start the Eclipse and do it. And other one is we'll provide the features as a P2 URL. So through the Eclipse through the Eclipse uh, update size, they can uh, up, uh, update the they can update the plugin. So they, all the URL will be given. All the URL will be given in the um, 
uh, hosted place and you can they can point you to the updated URL in the Eclipse and uh, use it. So this is the place where we have the uh, this is the place where we have hosted all the composite zip. So if you move if you take for ESP for an example, if you move to the installed packs, we have uh, um, uh, hosted all the plugins according to the uh, platform we are working. If it's a Linux uh, 32, if it's a Linux uh, 64, we have the zip file. So this zip file will consist the uh, developer studio ESP Eclipse uh, Luna. So this will be based on the Luna Eclipse dis uh, distribution. This will have the Eclipse plus kernel plus ESP product plugins installed. This will have all the uh, operating system. Uh, this will have the all operating system zip files. And the other one, P2 packages, there are two types of uh, zip files. This uh, developer studio kernel ESB uh, main will consist only the product feature, which means if we take a ESB, it will have only the ESB tooling feature. Another one is the developer studio kernel ESB composite. This zip will have already kernel installed and plus ESP product plugins feature installed. So you can download this one and install in a fresh Eclipse and use it. So this is another URL where we have host the uh, features. So you can point to this place, place and uh, through the um, Eclipse update URL you can install the feature. Without downloading the zip you can use this URL and point to this one and install via the uh, update URL. And then now we'll set, uh, we can uh, see how we can set up it. So if you have a fresh Eclipse already running in your machine, uh, then you can install the kernel product plugin. If it's already installed uh, kernel and product tools, if you want to move for some other feature. For example, if ESP product plugin installed, if you want to work on the analytics features, you can download the analytics uh, plugin or you, you can point to the update URL and get the analytics the installed and start to work on the analytics. But if you have a um, uh, Eclipse uh, uh, with the kernel installed, if you want to work in a one product called ESB, so you have to point to the ESP update URL or you can download the only the Eclipse uh, the standalone zip and install it and use it. Another uh, configuration is if you have the um, kernel installed product plugins and if you want to make it for another stuff, you can download the plugin and install it. And from the now, from next slide onwards, Avantika will uh, explain the uh, environment specific artifacts and the uh, demo will be after that. Hi, I hope you all had a brief introduction to the upcoming release of Developer Studio, which is 4.0.0. It has not been released yet. It will be released soon. So I'll, I hope all of you will have a great experience with Developer Studio 4.0.0. So let's move on to the main topic of the presentation today, which is environment-specific artifacts. So first the question is, why do we need environment-specific artifacts? That is because we know that all companies, they have different environments set up to test and develop their artifacts. So these being development environments, testing environments, production environments. So the main challenge we face as developers is to maintain our artifacts across these environments. That is, sometimes we have to duplicate our artifacts with the same contents just because we have a separate endpoint that we are pointing to. Or else we have difficulty in maintaining all these artifacts with different endpoints because they are huge. So today we will be discussing these problems. So environment specific artifacts help us to better maintain and organize our sources, our codes and our artifacts that are being deployed across WS2 servers. It also reduces efforts of code repetition for different environments so that we can maintain the same resources with the same codes separately and differentiate the ones that need to be differentiated. So we will talk about the WS2 recommended approach. So we have two scales of these environment specific configurations. One is the small scale developments which will most probably have a single C app, single ESB, single registry resource based structure which will be a very simple structure and that that is one case where the 
In this case, we can use Maven placeholder based artifacts. I will be discussing those later in, during the demo. So in this case, if we have one or two URLs, these URLs we can provide during the build time. Then what we can do is we can have the same configuration files, same artifacts, and during the build time we will be injecting the endpoints via the uh, via Maven placeholders. Therefore, the build artifacts will contain the endpoints that we gave during the build. So that is one scenario. The other one is the modifical case, which is large-scale developments. So in this case, we need better management. We need to have our registry resources separately in a GREC. Uh, then we need to have multiple C apps, multiple endpoints, multiple ASV projects. So one solution for this is to have a mounted registry. I'll be discussing what it is later. So in the mounted registry case, we can have different resource paths for our different endpoints. That is, the dev endpoint will be deployed at one location. The QA endpoint will be deployed in another location. But for the ESB, all these will be seen as in the same location. Since we are having separate ESB instances for our separate environments, we can share the mounted registry across these environments and use these endpoints being deployed in different different resource paths. The other scenario is to have a separate, separate registry and ESB instance per configuration. This is a very simple scenario where you can have separate uh, separate artifact bundles for each deployment. This is a large-scale deployment where you will have separate registry artifacts and directing to each of the endpoints. So the ESB will call these registry artifacts and they will call the respective endpoints. This is the mounted scenario, which is the more complex scenario which I told earlier. So in this case, what happens is, you will have different ESBs for your product, uh, different environments and you will have a shared registry across these ESBs and your endpoints will be deployed in separate locations. So since you have separate registry parts, you need to have separate registry projects having these endpoints and a single ESB project which will see the endpoints as they exist in a single location even though they are physically located in separate locations. So you have to maintain your ESB artifacts separately and all your registry resources separately. And a single C app you can deploy across all these environments. So we will be discussing that during the demo. So how to do the uh, registry mounting? This is how you do a registry mounting. In this case, what happens is you'll have a governance registry and the registry DB will be shared across your production ESB environment and deploy development ESB environment. As you can see in this image, all these um, registry, you will see these registries as a single location. The development environment will see it as system governance. Production environment will also see it as system governance. But physically, these endpoints are located in different resource paths. The share, in the shared registry DB, the development environment endpoints will be deployed in system governance dev, and the production environment uh, artifacts will be deployed in system governance prod. So this is a more descriptive image where you can see how these endpoints are deployed and how these endpoints are accessed from different ways. In the ESB, you'll have endpoint different endpoints for production environment and development environment and in the shared registry DB you will have them in physically different locations but the ESB seeing them as in single location. So now we will go to the demo. So this is uh, ESP instance, ESP400 instance where we have only the ESP and registry resources. So, we will first be first creating our ESB config project. So, we can have a single ESB project. Uh, we will call this the student sample because we have already created our backends giving us student uh, responses. So, we have the ESB project. Then, we need to create separate registry resource projects for our different environments. 
since we are anyhow going to have separate endpoints, separate uh, address endpoints, we need to have this in different registry resource projects. So we can have the student registry resource for QA backend. Then we can have the student registry uh, resource for prod environment. Then what we need to do is we need to create our registry resource that is our address endpoint, student endpoint. So we need to, uh, we can have different artifact name, a different artifact name and then the registry path it needs to be QA, uh, no this is the prod, so it needs to be prod endpoints. When we create the registry mounting, the in the ESB, we can give the mounted path as prod for the e, prod ESB dev for the dev ESB QA as the, for the QA ESB. So even though the, for the ESB it sees as the single point in the registry, it will exist in a different physical location called governance prod. And for QA, it will be as governance QA. So after doing these configurations, I will show you how these configurations are done. After doing these configurations only, we have to give this registry path. This is for system governance prod endpoints. Then we will create our QA endpoint, which is We have to give the same name, student endpoint, because our we have a single ESP project which is going to be deployed across all the environments. So we will be referring this the all these endpoints with the same name in those proxies or sequences. Therefore, we need to make sure that we have the same name for the same endpoint. And then this is going to be an address endpoint. It will be the QA endpoints. Make sure that this name is also the same name. Then, so if you go to this, you will see that this is in the system governance QA endpoints. But due to the mounting that we do, the ESB always will see the, this as system governance endpoints. It will not see this QA physical separation. So in the endpoint, you need to add the address, the different endpoint that you are referring to. That is your QA endpoint and in the prod one you need to add your prod endpoint. So let us now create a simple proxy service here. Student sample proxy. This we will create just a simple custom proxy. Okay. We will add a log mediator, then we will add a send mediator. So for the send mediator, we need to add our endpoint. So we will add a named endpoint, and for this named endpoint, this named endpoint, We can add the resource that we have already created from the workspace. It doesn't matter which one we give since both we have named as the same. So once you add it, it will come as governance QA endpoint student endpoint. But since we have done the registry mounting in the registry, we need to change this to governance endpoints student endpoint XML. So this way the ESB can access all endpoints with the same name. Mm, then we need to add a send mediator in the out sequence. So this is our basic proxy configuration. Then we can create a single C app. 
let's call this the student C app and we need to have all these projects, all these artifacts in the same C app. So once we create this, you can see that this will have the governance registry as their server role, the, all the registry resources, the ESP artifact will have the enterprise service bus. So once we export this as a C app and composite application archive, it will generate a single C app. We can save it to some, any location that we want. I have already created these artifacts, therefore I would want to create the C app here. So once you export it, you can deploy the same instance, same artifact bundle across all the instances. So now if we go to the deployment instances that we have configured, so you can see that I have, we, I have one JREG instance, I have three ESBs each being each representing the QA ESB, prod ESB and dev ESB. So I have uh, mounted the registry across all these ESBs and I have deployed the student C app on all these uh, setups. So you can see I have student C app uh, in all these three ESBs. So this is the same C app. So it will only deploy the relevant artifacts in the relevant server. So in this is the shared governance registry. So if you go to the governance registry, you can see in system governance, you can see the dev environment, the prod environment, and the QA environment, the physical locations we created with our endpoint paths. So it will automatically create this resource um, collections and deploy your endpoints here. So this is the student endpoint we created for the dev. Uh, this is the student endpoint we created for the prod. And this is the student endpoint that we created for the QA. So I have pointed these into different different backends. So if you can go, you can see that I have created these endpoints via Mokiyo. So these endpoints are different, but the name is the same. So if you go to the ESP, and if you go to endpoints, you can see, it will see this as governance endpoint XML, as I explained earlier. And if you go inside, you can see that it has this end, and our proxy is deployed here. So these endpoints are coming from the shared registry. We are not deploying them in the ESB, but since you have mounted the registry, it will act as the registry instance for the ESB. And this dev ESB instance will be pointed to governance dev resource path of the shared registry. Similarly, all these ESB instances will be having these uh, endpoints deployed. So you can see everyone is having it as governance, endpoints, student endpoint, etc. How to mount this registry and how to do these configurations? You can refer to WSO documentations and figure out how to do this. So you have more than enough uh, resources to learn how to do this. So it's just a matter of doing the correct configurations and getting the setup done. So I will do a simple demo. So these ESP instances, I have put them with uh, port offsets. So these services are deployed at 8280, 8281, and 8282 separately. So when I invoke the 8280 ESP instance, so when I invoke that, you can see I get the response from the dev backend. So this is the same proxy that we created. We have deployed across all the um, ESP instances. So if I instead invoke the 8281 ESB instance, which is the QA ESB, you can see that I am calling the QA endpoint correctly and getting the backend response from the QA endpoint. 
So you can see that all these endpoints we are referring from be the same name from the ESB as the ESB sees them as deployed at the same location, but physically they are different endpoints locating at located at different endpoints in the shared registry instance. So 8282 is our prod environment, prod endpoints. So prod ESB we can see that we are getting the prod response from the back end. So this is the simple demonstration that we have prepared with the artifacts that we showed how to create and with the setup of a shared registry across three ESB instances representing different environments. So these environment specific artifacts, since the ESB artifact is the same artifact, you know you don't need to repeat your uh, configurations, you don't need to repeat the codes which are the same. So that you can do, you can do with, go ahead with the same artifacts. So the other one that we discussed was the A1 placeholder based artifacts. So in that one, what you can do is, instead of giving your endpoint URL directly, you can use a Maven in, uh, placeholder here as the endpoint URL, you can call this anything. So in your endpoint, you'll be giving a dynamic placeholder value as endpoint URL in the registry resource. So this you will be putting in the form XML of your registry resource under properties, you can have a separate property called endpoint URL and you can have the dynamic value here. So during the build time with the minus D setup um, argument, minus D argument, you can pass the value for this endpoint URL which will be different for your different environments and then when you build the C app, so in this structure you need to have this in a Maven multi-module project so that you can ensure in, with a single Maven clean install instance you will build your registry resources, your ESP projects and finally build the C app with installing all these artifacts. So you can have a single registry resource project, a single ESP project and a single C app and with these placeholders you can pass different values for your different endpoint URLs during build time so that you can build your QA C app with your C, uh, QA endpoints, prod C app with your prod endpoint and vice versa so that the build instance will have this endpoint value embedded. So, um, uh, yes, uh, that's all for the demo. So if you have any questions, you can go ahead with the questions now. You can use the questions panel in the GoToWebinar tool for all your questions. So Joan has a question, uh, which version of Eclipse, which version of Eclipse IDE is supported. So this is supported in uh, ESB uh, Eclipse Developer Studio 380. Eclipse is Luna. In, in the uh, Eclipse uh, Developer Studio 400 is based on Eclipse uh, Luna uh, release. So um, the, we have the previous releases also. We, you can do the same uh, in environment specific creation with the um, 380 also. But the, the demo we had on uh, Developer Studio 400, it also based on Luna. So you can get the fresh installation of Eclipse Luna and install the resp respective plugins, big uh, Eclipse the current plugins or the product plugins, and uh, install the necessary plugins in your Eclipse version. Bruce, uh, yes, uh, 
we have this support currently on Eclipse and we do not have any tooling support for IntelliJ IDEA. That's all the questions we have. Uh, thank you everyone for joining and hope you all got a brief idea on how to create and maintain environment specific artifacts with WS2 Developer Studio and also on how to install and create your own Developer Studio instance with the Developer Studio 400 instance release. So uh, that's all for tonight and thank you for joining.